Well, imposter syndrome, it's a very, very trendy thing now, isn't it? You've got to have imposter syndrome. If you're a vet, you've got to have imposter syndrome. Um, I'm not a big sufferer from imposter syndrome. What I, well, in common with probably most vets is I like to know what I'm talking about. Mm-hmm. If I'm going to talk, I want to know, uh, you know, that what I'm saying has some veracity. Mm-hmm. And the problem with science and the problem with veterinary medicine and surgery is it's just too wide. How can you mm-hmm. possibly get a foothold on a subject that's expanding exponentially as we speak? Mm-hmm. Every time you turn around, there's something new. So we're all we're all sort of prone to imposter syndrome for that reason. Mm-hmm. It's because we're trying to cling to an avalanche of information and try to make sense of it when most of us, well, myself, I would include in this, are clinicians. So we're quite good at solving problems and fixing things, but I'm not a great scientist. I don't have a deep, deep scientific understanding. Um, I'm, I'm more of a, you know, a fix-it kind of guy. Mm-hmm. North surgeon. We're not famous for our deep analysis of problems. Okay, we're more, we're more hands-on. We're practical. Yeah. I'm a practical sort of person. Okay, so I see the headline, but I'm not wonderful at delving deep down into the substance. So I have to force myself. So from the point of view of the imposter syndrome, um, I, it's, a, it's an effort that I have to make to delve deeper into my subjects. Um, but I do feel vulnerable and I do feel as though, wait a minute, do I really know what I'm talking about? Mm-hmm. I'm sure that the audience knows more than me. I'm sure mm-hmm. I'm going to look a bit silly if I say this or that or, or get it wrong. Um, but as I've got older, I found that it really doesn't matter. If you make a mistake, you hold your hand up and you say, I've made a mistake. I don't know everything. Nobody knows everything. Uh, but I'm doing my best. I'm trying. Mm-hmm.